好，我先用中文说明一下今天这个 panel 的安排。呃，刚刚上半场我们提到了，在地缘政治也好，在民主倒退的过程当中，公民科技在扮演什么样子的角色？那我们想要再更聚焦一点，回到东亚，在 East Asia 这边，东亚这个区域其实非常的特别。我们同时有台湾、日本、韩国，但我们也有。北韩跟中国，呃，其他完全不一样的国家，这样子，在这个区域里面，到底呃，公民科技的发展，在三个国家这样社群比较之下，我们可以看见什么？或是在这个区域所遭受的这样地缘政治的冲突的前缘，公民科技社群受到什么样子的影响？而当中这三个社群各自看见什么样子的可能性？上半场我们听见十位。g n v 社群的共同分享，我们接下来有时间要来听听我们 c o f o r Japan 跟 c o f o r Korea 两个创办人他们的分享，这样子。OK， so we'll start with a brief introduction of two of our distinguished panelists. So shall we start from the right? Let's welcome o h y o n g from c o f o r Korea. This, okay. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I'm Oh Hyun from Code for Korea. Uh, it, it's short introduction. Yeah, sure, please. Yes, yes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> If it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's it. Very okay. Short. Great. <laughs> Very short. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hello, Sam from Code for Japan. Hi, guys. Uh, thank you for having me. Hey. Wow. <laughs> I'm honored to be here, and I'm Haruseki from Code for Japan. Uh, yeah, I founded Code for Japan in 2013, and uh, yeah, often come to Taiwan and join, uh, attend to the, this kind of conference. And yeah, uh, thank you for having me. So uh, that's all. Thank you. Okay. So when we further some uh, some details about the growth of the community and then what the current status of the community in Japan and Korea, if you want to share. From uh, from yeah. me, yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Code for Japan, uh, as I said, established in 2013, and yeah, we are civic tech community uh, like uh, Cap Zero, uh, and uh, that I'm. Uh, let me focus on uh, the difference from the uh, Code for Japan and uh, Cap Zero. Uh, Code for Japan has uh, a local brigades. Uh, we uh, we have uh, more than uh, 90 uh, local brigades, like a code for Sapporo or code for Osaka or code for Kyoto or something, and and that, that these communities are uh, independent and autonomous, autonomously uh, operated. Uh, we are not controlling the, them. That they, they are very grassroots uh, community, and we uh, act as a kind of a network, and 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 let. And, and I create an opportunity to share uh, the knowledge uh, between the, uh, each local uh, cities, uh, communities. And we, this is uh, one of the different point. And second, second difference po different point is uh, we are a registered institution that provides a GovTech solution to the uh, government, uh, local and uh, national government. And, and, and we, we service, uh, uh, our service offering includes developing digital platform or conducting hackathons or operating, uh, uh, organizing uh, workshops for the local government officials. And so, so we, provide paid services to the government. I think this is the most different point from the uh, Gulf Zero. And, and that uh, notable projects include the COVID-19 dashboard for the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. And also we uh, deployed uh, Decidim. It, it, it is a open source uh, citizen participation platform uh, for, for several uh, cities. And that and also, uh, so that we generate uh, revenues uh, from the government services and uh, re uh, and and you spend that that revenues on the uh, civic tech community side events like uh, monthly hackathons or uh, or organizing uh, uh, events and or also on. And so uh, I don't uh, so. 
we have a dedicated team uh, around 20 employees and the contractors. That is, I think this is the most different point. I don't think Code for Japan's way is the best. Uh, I have a lot of respect for the GAP, GAP Zero because they're all volunteers and yeah, so uh, such a great uh, community. I admire you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Halasan, for your sharing. Yeah, uh, just for your awareness, uh, GAP Zero, Code for Japan, Code for Korea have this Face the Ocean Hackathon every, every year happen in different places. So this year will be in Japan in August. So they have been learning from each other, or exchanging ideas, just hacking together for these three days for many years until now, right? Now for Oh Hyung. Yeah, Code of Korea. In Korea, the civic hacking movement began around 2012, uh, along with the uh, open government movement. But there, there were local code for groups, but we are not well connected at that time. Uh, since then, uh, various uh, civic hacking organizations existed by topic and reason individually in Korea. Uh, but in 2020, a national network was rebooted in the wake of COVID-19 era. So we asked the government to open data related to COVID-19. Then we worked together on several projects to overcome the coronavirus, like you, uh, we also did these public mask apps together. And the government has also begun to consider the value of the civic hacking movement as important. And the Code of Korea is trying to promote the civic hacking movement to the Korean society and create, create a network. Uh, we had already lots of civic hacking, not they just rename uh, over uh, umbre under umbrella the code of Korea, but uh, various civic hacking network we want to establish, establish together. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for both uh, for the introduction of two communities. Yeah. So next question is the most. Um, I think uh, both of them they want to share the most for the next questions, the challenges. <laughs> for the two communities. We know, you know, for two, three countries, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, things are very, very different. So just want to hear more about what kind of challenge you are facing with the community given your pol politics and your society conditions. Yeah, let's start with Oh Hyung because he has a lot to say on this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's show the yeah, slides. I have pre prepared two slides. Uh, first one, yeah, maybe can yeah let me tell you something that is not often said so <laughs> do not think weird <laughs> please yeah. it is well well it is not well known outside of korea and on the other hand it is a challenge that seems to be a characteristic of east asia uh yeah please yeah show <laughs> yeah yeah uh korea is uh, uh famous democratic country that led to the impeachment of the president through a large scale civil protest. Maybe you know that. And large uh, protests seem to be held every 10 years, I think, in Korea. So in 2007, citizens held large scale protests due to the uh, controversy over importing medical disease. And from then on, uh, citizens began using internet platforms for activism so from 2007. Uh, at, that, at that time, there was a service uh, platform called Agora, where citizens could petition and the number of uh, the online signatures from citizens demanding the impeachment of the president, the former president, exceeded 1.14 million. So, However, government agencies aware of the influence of the internet platform at the time, uh, more than 15 years ago, uh, secretly defined government critical posts as uh, interference with state affairs by pro-North Korea forces through the National Intelligence Service and the Ministry of Defense, which are in charge of national security and carry out an, an operation to destroy this service. In addition, it puts pressure on companies that operate this service from all ways. 
And this company has merged into Kakao, and Kakao shut down this service more than five years ago, yeah. And creating an atmosphere in which citizen participation is considered a taboo among a Korean media platforms. I was one of the people who developed this service. <laughs> and next slide, yeah, please. Well, let's take a look at uh, what the current president actually said in the, uh, our Liberation Day congressionally speech last year. The current government defines democracy activists as forces seeking to overthrow the country and says the real uh, efforts must be made to protect uh, our liberal democracy. And this is the real comment he said. Yeah, communist, totally, totally libertarian forces, democracy activists, and human rights activists. Actually, uh, yeah, to achieve this, uh, various supports for civil society are cut off, and their activities are considered as a crime. And interestingly, after leaving the company that created the citizen participation platform, as I mentioned, I created a democracy activist cooperative in Korea. So, yeah, I don't think he understands the democracy activist, but yeah, anyway, that mainly deals with uh, we uh, create digital democracy platforms and civic technology in Korea, and we made some fact checking platform in Korea, but we had to shut down. Uh, because of pressure from the conservative politicians last year. I have no particular political op orientation, but just that I believe that civic technology is a good foundation for more civic participation and better civic collaboration. However, I think we are in an environment where it is very easy for politicians to divide and distort our any civil society actions, activities as they wish. I also understand the difficult international relations that our politicians have to deal with, but it's very difficult. And so I think this is very special challenge given to citizens living in East Asian countries. It seems like the challenge that we maybe will only end when citizens living in this region cooperate together and uh, cooperate more with each other beyond one country to create real peace in East Asia. And how do we solve this old and special challenge? Uh, that's always my concern. Wow, thank you. I think that's the next topic for Face the Ocean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Hack film. laughs> okay. Thank you for your sharing. We heard about the suppression and we heard about the shrinking of the CB space in South Korea. We also heard about the change of government or political powers have serious impact to CB tech community. Um, that's, that's really sad to hear, but thank you for the sharing. We will expect more questions from the audience following the session. Okay, uh, let's welcome how to say Yeah, uh, in Japan, uh, as I said, the, we generate revenues from the, from the government, right? So. However, it also carries risk of losing the uh, kind of the, our uh, opposition to the government, right? So it is, it, uh, yeah, uh, it is the, the, the weak point of our, our, our model. So we, we selected this revenue model because we couldn't get enough funding from, from kind of the funders who focus on digital and democracy issues. So, and also another big issue in Japan is that many people don't respect democracies. This is my personal opinion, <laughs> but uh, uh, many citizens act like uh, consumers, not like uh, builders or activists. And people uh, have no expectation that their voice, we, voices will be heard properly. So, and the political situation in Japan is, is very stable, and the uh, LDP has been uh, in power for, for a long time. So, uh, very stable society in, in Japan is, uh, uh, the, and the people uh, have no res respect and don't care about the uh, 
the kind of democracy or political discussion. So uh, people tired <laughs> about the, the, the situation. And uh, yeah, so, so yeah, so uh, democracy uh, it has become something like an heir for the people, uh, and people uh, don't uh, don't have a great interest in political discussion in Japan. And in addition, there is a little environment for the uh, constr uh, constructive debate, and and, and there uh, government doesn't uh, uh, government don't uh, give opportunities to join the uh, political discussion. Uh, they hesitate to be open and they want to control everything. So that is a, a problem in Japan. And, and, but, but I think the civic tech is the uh, key for changing this situation because Japanese people don't want to make a public opinion publicly, so they hesitate to say something, but they have a mind to want to help someone or yeah. the region or uh, yeah, uh, the community or community, so they can work instead of say something. So civic tech is a great way to invite them to okay. just help others, and maybe this goes to the uh, the uh, maybe they want to change some uh, situation or uh, role, uh, rules or something or governance. Maybe so we can step up from the, the doing right. something to the uh, changing something. Yeah, it, yeah it's my opinion. Yeah, it's a very good takeaway. Yeah, we heard about government being not open enough, and we heard about the citizens not caring enough mm -hmm. about democracy. But we also heard about. Uh, Civita as a tool to encourage people to do something instead of just saying. So that's what we learn from from uh, Japan. Uh, thank you for sharing these two uh, challenges. Uh, I know it is uh, quite often for Ohyong and Halusan to engage with the governments in Korea and Japan. And you have different projects working with the government, different experiences, good, bad, things like that. So. Uh, the following question would be, can you give us some suggestion, like one thing you think government can do to support civic tech, and maybe one thing that, you know, that have been done wrong in your own country as a government to support civic tech community? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so first, one thing that government can do to support civic tech is by funding digital public goods open source or open data, and, and so on. And, and also uh, provide opportunities to uh, invite uh, people to join, to, to work with them. So, and, and open governance is very important. So, uh, because by investing these areas, the that, that government can help foster interoperability and uh, inclusivity in public services. And, and so, uh, yeah, Japanese government had had a lot of efforts in a, a open open data movement. So uh, in Japan, uh, many local cities all already uh, provide providing the uh, are already providing open data as a basic minimum data set. But uh, uh, that that lead to the uh, people to create something. So and 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 also uh, visualize data uh, for finding the uh, actual uh, situation in, in the local areas. That was uh, one good point. And also the one thing they've gotten wrong is uh, having too high expectation in, uh, uh, in the short term on a digital solution. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of dream. <laughs> but, uh, it, it's very difficult to build some useful solutions right. just only caring about the digital uh, area right so uh, the the they expected immediate and trans transformative re result from these initi initiatives can lead the uh, uh, yeah uh, lead uh, so but the, it lead it, it that kind of uh, stance lead to people to have a kind of 
uh, disillusionment or and skepticism about the uh, oh, right. yeah. yeah efficiency. So the, they spend a lot of money, but then nothing happened, <laughs> and people uh, have uh, had a frustration. So right. instead of that, they should do more. Uh, long long term vision. They should have long term vision, and and encourage. Uh, they had to encourage the uh, students to uh, be involved in creating something, not only just the, the some private company built some fancy <laughs> death dashboard or <laughs> something. Yeah. So okay. that that was a, a big mistake, I think. Right. I think the answer is can be clear, but I want to. Have a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. Why it can only be short-term mm. uh, projects, or why expect things can happen in such a short time from the government? Because the politician politician ordered <laughs> you should do this. Then also the budget system is uh, uh, annually. Annually the, budget. The, the annually budget yeah. is a basic uh, uh, spending uh, uh, method of yeah. the government. Right. So they have to get something, clear outcome from that uh, the funding. So right. that is also uh, uh, led to the, this. Uh, how do you manage that? Because you need uh -huh. a budget, right? Yeah, yeah. So how do you manage that? Great question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also uh, ha had to show something. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, we built some. Uh, uh, we uh, created some uh, reports to the government. Nice reports to the <laughs> government. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Work, uh, I, I, we had to work with that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Great. Uh, and please close this clipping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't want to blame okay. my government in country. Yeah, I love my country. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing left done right and one thing done wrong in terms yeah, yeah. of support uh, the community. And I think Korean people like to act more voluntarily. So it is important to create many opportunities for cooperation. I always said to government that and deal with more important issues like COVID-19, I think. Yeah. So and provide the necessary provide the necessary resources that the government can provide, especially data. I think uh, we can also consider uh, civic tech as an important part of the civic education in society, and government can contribute to spreading them as an education civic. Uh, however, it is difficult to think when the government. I uh, think a civic tech project is uh, like an ordinary government project, like you said. <laughs> so it's very, uh, it became very difficult when they think it's uh, the same uh, with the other, the other uh, government project. So I think voluntary participation seems to be the key to civic technology. So right. when Code of Korea cooperates with the government, we ask them that they respect the citizens as the partners yeah, of the government who uh, solve problems together, not just a supporter or not just an uh, organizer. They are all our partners, and I or, uh, ask them. Yeah. Right, thank you. Uh, last question from me, and then we're open to the audience. Um, so we have talked about how polarized the society it is now and how difficult to have a, a comprehensive public discussion or discourse on uh, social issues. So uh, just wondering from your eyes, from your perspective, what is civic tech to you at this difficult time? And um, it's very uh, excited moments when we have project with uh, COVID-19. I remember that. So citizens who uh, participated in the development of the public mask app in Korea uh, during the COVID-19 period said that they were very surprised to see that 
I could do something for society with technology. Right. And maybe I think a couple of people also feel like. And the government and citizens could trust and cooperate together with each other like this. So the experience of solving problems that our society faces by working together, citizens and government, seems to, I think, growing a sense of community and ownership in our society, in citizens. In any way, I think we have to live together, <laughs> whether in one country or in East Asia as a whole. I hope we will continue to pay attention uh, to the potential of the civic tech to create a society as a community and invite more people, citizens, who will realize it together as a friend, I think. Yeah, thank you. Halu-san? Yeah, for me, civic tech is like a, a building a bridge between the government and the citizens. Yeah. Uh, by leveraging technologies, we, we, can, we can create the channels that enhance communication and, that, and understanding the, uh, and co cooperation between public authorities and the pu uh, people who they, they serve. I think this is a very important point. Uh, as ho said, working uh, together is very important to understand each other. And so these, these kind of collaborative space is, is not only make uh, uh, governance more transparent and re re responsive, but also empower citizens to take an action role in shaping uh, policies or, or services that affect their daily lives, right? So yeah, for me, so I, I, I'm running Code for Japan, and also I work for the uh, government, mm. uh, like a digital agency, yeah. and goes to the local governments. Right. And at that time, I, I, if I talk to the local government officials, I don't use technical terms. I don't say the very fancy tech word. <laughs> I don't uh, tech word. Just say their language. Uh, just speak their language. Ah, so okay. this kind of the trans translation between the uh, government and technologies yeah. and or civic and it is, it was really important for me and if we work together we can build trust each other that this is the most uh, important value uh, for of the governance i think yeah just wondering what is your experience as the guy between the community and the government you have two roles and then how do you deal with that how how do I uh, dealing with the situation, with or that, are there any challenges that. to have two uh -huh. positions? Actually, I have not much difficulty right now. But in in the first time, uh, in in the beginning, it was very difficult. To, I, I I I I was uh, I was when, uh, going to the uh, local government office, office right. and I I explained many things about the tech, but the, no one care about that. <laughs> okay. So I changed the, uh, uh, just to observe and right. what they are talking and right. cut in if I can contribute. That, Being a citizen. Yeah, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both for your sharing. Uh, are we using Slido or if you have any question, please use your hand for our speakers here or you can also Put your questions on Slido. We have five minutes, three minutes left. Anyone? Thank you. Uh, we have two questions. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you, uh, thank you very much for the insight, for sharing. I have a question for Code for Korea. Um, would you be able to elaborate a bit more on the pressure that accept that exerted on you um, by the conservative politicians. Are they more concerned about the products of your projects or are they more concerned about your group? Thank you. Yeah, I will I will uh, you wanna answer now or later? Yeah I can I can repeat later. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll get another question and then we can answer. Yeah. Okay. So uh Hello, Sun just mentioned you have um, projects collaborated with the government. So I want to ask them uh, the portion of the those projects. Among those projects, that uh, how many how many percentage 
of those projects uh, receive uh, revenue or uh, money fundings from the government, and uh, how many, um, what is the portion of those projects which are uh, contributed by the community voluntarily, not, uh, I mean, not funded uh, projects. Right, so one question to halu -san, one question to oh hyung -san. The question is, what kind of pressure you are suffering from the government and why? Is it because the product you built or what is the reason they put on such a pressure on you? And pressure and specific details on what kind of pressure and how is that? Okay, great. Uh, so, how and why, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's uh, regularly happens in Korea in, I think, in every 10 years. And every regime, when our regime changes, one conservative party is very based on the uh, experience of the war in Korea and the fears of the something from outside of the world. And, and so they attacked or they pressured the citizens as a it's, I think it's a weird thing to you all, but they think uh, we call a communist or from China or from North Korea, but I'm from Busan in Korea. <laughs> so <laughs> they, they uh, named us uh, as uh, outside of the people who uh, corrupt our country. And, and that's the way they used in Korea. But sadly, all the people dies in Korea very past, so their uh, support background is very grown to uh, shrink now, so I think it's very sad. And the way they uh, attack, uh, uh, why they attack citizens like us, I think um, it helps them to achieve their power and government. We still have the older generation who experienced the war and fear the conflicts in the globally. So they use them to uh, to gain a power in Korea. I don't know the situation of the Taiwan, but it is the situation in Korea now. Yeah. Thank you. And how so? So question was uh, uh, how percentage of the uh, revenues from the government. And yeah. And so Code of Japan, uh, last year, Code of Japan had uh, uh, 1.8 million US dollars as a total sales. And I think two, two thirds of that revenue was from the government, uh, national and local level government. And uh, other, uh, rest of that was from the uh, kind of the event sponsors or uh, funding from the philanthropies uh, and so on. So uh, yeah, but the, uh, the, the, the sales was that and, and also uh, revenue from the government is not so uh, high margin. But, so it was one of the dif difficulties, yeah. Yeah, thank you for the sharing. I think we are running out of time, but the panel is just an opening for a regional comparison from uh, Taiwan, Japan, Korea about the development of CV Tech community. But you have any further questions or detail you want to know from Oh Hyung and Halu san, they do have their own session. So please uh, go to their session and have your question and have more dialogue on what happened in Japan or in Korea and how we can maybe call together or learn from each other. Okay, thank you again for your sharing and thank you for your time. Thank you.